everybody. Oh, afternoon. Good evening, depending where you're from and what time of day it is. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about the second project that we were given, which is the Penguin Books competition. How this came to be was in classroom, uh, they had a random generator from the Penguin book website and we were just given a book random. Uh, I was given two different types, the end or the finger. The one that I went for in the end, <laughs> get it, <laughs> was the end. A brief synopsis of what the end is about is is this guy who has, basically doesn't live anywhere in particular and is constantly moving from place to place. What I wanted to do is something of all around that. I have a few reference images here to get me a bit inspired. Now, the reason why I've chosen all of schools is because in the book, the protagonist refers to his head as a skull. I have some artist inspirations that I really like the look of and I just thought they look really cool. Tom Finch who does these optical illusion ones. When you look really close in the images they look like people but then from a distance it looks like a skull. And Glenn Priest does these really cool smoky looking skulls. The next thing I did was do some a bit of like initial sketch work. Now I had an idea on what I was going to do. I really wanted to use skulls because that was one of the key points of this book. So here's some of my initial sketches of maybe ideas of what places could look like or what I want to draw. And then a better idea of the description of places. These were the ones that I really liked the most. I really liked this idea of like for the cover of the book, this skull, but it's like really smoky. It goes into a cave, so I really like this, like this idea of a cave. And then I really like this idea of using the trees and the flowers surrounding um, to make a form of a skull. The idea was you would have to search for the skull within the image. As soon as you get the recurring theme in the images, you know what you're looking for. One in the shed, but you're viewing outside, and then one in a field. Uh, and then one in the canoe, which is in a dream. So that is my quick look at my sketchbook. What you're about to see is a few time lapses of my five final images in its creation. So, enjoy these cheeky little time lapses.
that was quick. <laughs> so what I wanted to create with this image was this sense of a dark tone. I feel like everyone has seen my fun side but the things that I enjoy painting and um, I really like the look of is things that are dark and look really cool. So with this I took my time and if you saw briefly in the time lapse I did use masking tape. Now what I did was with a section of the image um, I basically like ripped sections of masking tape and I put it on the paper and then painted over it. Once the image was dry I took removed those sections and then I kept repeating this pattern to make like a really cool like a broken 3D effect kind of thing. I am personally on it like I really enjoy this image and looking at it because I honestly think it looks really cool and it's something I think it's my first attempt at doing realism with watercolors um, and I think it did a pretty good job. The things that I'll probably tweak about this image is there are some areas where because the more you layer on top of watercolour you can pick up the watercolour and you'll get these dark lines as you can see on the teeth there some areas where it just it, it just didn't want to blend but other than that I think this image is pretty good next image I think is my least favourite. It didn't exactly turn out how I wanted it to turn out. It looked completely different from um, what was in my head and how the reference image looked. I know I, I know I could have done better. Especially this was like my first project that I was purely focusing on the landscape which I'm not really that brilliant at and this is my first time actually approaching this challenge. I wanted to do something that, that stepped outside my comfort zone. So this was just me doing something and then having a feel and having an idea of what I want to do. But if I was to revisit this image in the future I would definitely maybe change the whole concept especially since the rest of my images are set during night time. It looks very empty and it is very obvious that it is a skull which defeats the whole point of trying to find the skull in the image. I am very proud of this image. I really like how the sea turned out, especially the moon. I like the little flicks that I did in uh, white watercolour to make it look like the waves were actually just crashing to give it a bit of movement. Um, I would say that the sky itself is very patchy um, because as soon as the watercolour starts to dry you have to go over that area to make it all look very smooth and it didn't, I didn't unfortunately achieve that kind of technique with the sky but this is sort of me getting the idea of the landscape and even though it's inside a cave for my first time doing water which water is very difficult to do in watercolours I think I did pretty well next we have inside the shed but looking out into the fields nothing much to go with this one I think what I've done so far is probably the best I possibly can the only few minor tweaks that I would probably add is maybe instead of just having the cow there I would add a person to give to, to define the nose a bit more. And the final image which happens to be my favourite one of the lot is this mountain landscape. Now the things that I would probably tweak is that the, the grass uh, feels behind like in front of it and surrounding it doesn't actually they look very empty and they just look like hills but 
I guess this makes makes this image very surreal looking. I compiled a bunch of mountains and uh, hills um, and then some clouds and created this um, reference image. And then using the reference image, which is what I did with the rest of the reference images for the other pieces, um, I drew it and obviously painted it. The water, I think, turned out a bit better in this image than it did in the cave one, mainly because there's a you can see a slight little reflection of the hills and I think I had a better idea on doing the reflection of the moon. I, want, I was worried that you couldn't make out it was a skull um, so I highlighted some of like, the defining features around the mountains but I was just fed back to that you could as long as you know what you're looking for you can actually see it like you can see the reoccurring themes within all the other pieces and until this one everyone seemed to found the skull which I was very happy with um, however the highlights surrounding um, to highlight the skull shape unfortunately is a bit of an eyesore <laughs> but overall I think I did very well with this project. I definitely enjoyed it, it was definitely a challenge and I had a lot of fun in creating these landscapes and it's given me some of the skill set. I really love the clouds um, in my final image because I spent so long layering the watercolours um, because the white watercolour is very translucent if you've ever played with watercolours before you'll find that it it only subtly changes the more colour the more white you add the, the more white it gets and sometimes it just becomes a mess so I'm very proud with proud with how these clouds came out I definitely will use this project in the future for um, because I really enjoyed the landscapes um, my guts growled. I really enjoyed doing these projects, the landscapes were the most fun part about it. Maybe I can use this for my future project in the next semester, um, maybe creating my own worlds. So, with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Stay thirsty.